Thanks for joining us on Nationwide today. I'm Elizabeth Omori. The Joint Admissions and Matriculations Board says it has introduced a new feature in the ongoing registration for the 2021 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination tagged Know Your Registration Officer to fortify the registration process, guard against abuse and manipulation of candidates, as well as for stalling examination malpractices. The board's head of public affairs, Fabian Benjamin, in a statement said, this is to ensure that, ensure that candidates know where and who is registering them for the 2021 Unified Tertiary Matriculations Examination and Direct Entry Exercises, adding that JAM has provided for the image of the registration officer to be displayed at the corner of the screen, being used to register the candidates besides its biometric details that had been captured. Fire has raised a female hostel and killed one student at the Federal College Kefi on Tuesday night. While the cause of the incident is yet to be ascertained, the Minister of State for Education has ordered for urgent and comprehensive investigation into the incident. Two facilities at the school to ascertain the impact of the inferno. The minister described the incident as sad and regrettable while commiserating with the management staff as well as family of the deceased Fever Tony, a 12-year-old JSS1 student who celebrated her birthday less than 24 hours before the ugly event. We've seen everything that has happened. We're making our own analysis and we'll take measures in response thereto. Parents of the disease are still battling to come to terms with the death of their daughter. You keep teenagers, GS1 students, entirely GS1 students, teenagers, children that don't know anything. You keep them in a dormitory without any supervision. Some of the victims are receiving medical treatment at the Federal Medical Center Kefi and the National Hospital Abuja. Although the principal of the college declined comment, the minister ordered for a thorough investigation on the cause of the inferno. From Kefi, Suleiman of Musa, NTE News. Lack of financing and physical security have been identified as major problems to ensuring safe and secure school environments to prevent school children from, from attacks. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria highlighted this and other issues while discussing financing safe school initiative. Alika Okonachi Arua reports. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria says the constant attacks on schools across the country, especially those in the rural areas, become a national emergency that must be addressed immediately. We need to ensure that there are uh, forward operating bases for uh, detachments of the army. Uh, or the Air Force Special Forces or the Navy Special Forces within 30 minutes of every major school. In Sokoto State, uh, we have not um, had any such an incident, but uh, we've been proactive in ensuring that um, we merge uh, most of the boarding schools. To cop the menace, the guests agreed that there is need for assistance and collaboration among stakeholders, both in the private and public sector, as well as international partners. Human capital is the greatest component of wealth creation in any country. Um, if we don't deal with this issue of our children going to school, then Nigeria is in, the, is, is in, is, is in big trouble. We will need to concentrate on what it is that we are looking at. This abductions, threats to learning, those who uh, encroach upon the learning space. The issue about uh, vocational training and a lot of these uh, skill sets, we're engaging states directly to see how they can engage youth and children 
who are not in school. The guests also stress the need for community involvement in security matters so that there will be quick response to emergencies. In Abuja, Alika, Okwanachi, Arua, NT News. Into girls in ICT, Nigeria practically demonstrated the theme of the 10th anniversary of the global celebration of the International Day of Girls in ICT. Connected girls creating a brighter future by taking an advocacy to the route to convince the next generation of women to take up the challenge and be vanguards of change. Momsodi Mendati reports. Women the world over have been striving not only to occupy the spheres of power and decision making but also close the wide gap of gender inequality in ICT. And the 2021 International Day of Girls in ICT has offered these women the opportunity to further pursue these targets. The death rates of motor accidents across the world is really disturbing me. So what has inspired us with this robot traffic is to control the traffic to reduce the death rates. We girls are not left out in the battle to move the world forward. And so, Students of Government Girls Science Secondary School Dute will never be the same after this morale boosting experience to encourage them aspire for the top and be steadfast in their choice of ICT courses in order to use technology and proper solutions to real life problems. Yes, we can. Do you believe in yourself? Yes. I can see all the and with the last performance here, I know that Nigeria is here and I know that the sky is just your starting point. I consider education the most important thing in your life because with good education you can stand on your own. All the problems that we are facing today in the society, gender-based violence, child abuse, all the rubbish, you can stem it down when we have educated mothers, educated women, especially in the sciences. ICT is what moves the world today. Plate number of the car, use the mission of the car, send it directly to the office. You can see we are already thinking ahead. 20 years to come, that means when we're navigating the traffic, uh, the road, the, the vehicles there would actually have a sign that would tell us there's congestion, this is an offender, and then there would be corrections. The girls are already going ahead in ICT to invent robots that can also, you know, help in uh, solving problems in the society. Persistence is the word. They need to keep pressing on. The International Day of Girls in ICT is a global movement to increase the representation of women and girls with equal access to opportunities. Hashtag Girls in ICT. Momso Damien Nati, NT News. Into other matters, ahead of the 27th of April scheduled meeting between the federal government and the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, the union says its members want to seek commitment from government as promises to address their demands are not enough to suspend industrial action. The president, while addressing journalists in Abuja, confirmed that some progress had been made in the last two weeks on the nationwide strike but only received assurances of payment of salary arrears and revitalization funds for the polytechnics. The issue of sorting out the details in the offer that has been made, we would like to see the 15 billion, we would like to see evidence that the 15 billion as offered has been made available to, uh, you know, for access by public uh, institutions in the sector. We would like to see our minimum wage arrears released, a definite position on the government. The government is not denying that they are owing us. What we are talking about is pay us. And if you are not paying us now, when are you paying us? At least let us hear. The industrial action started on the 6th of April. Meanwhile, the Pension Transitional Agreement Directorate Peter has appealed to the Nigeria Union of Pensioners to sheave its proposed protest over delay in the implementation of the consequential adjustment to the pension benefits occasioned by the 2019 minimum wage, as the implementation is most likely to commence at the end of 2021 20, April. April, going by the submissions that had been made by all stakeholders, which had noted that COVID-19 played a prominent role in the delay. Similarly, the Federal Prostatals and Private Sector Pensioners Association of Nigeria, FEPEN, has directed its members across the country to refrain from participating in any form of protest for any reason. 
that has to do with implementation of minimum pension. FEPAN stated that its National Administrative Council had earlier engaged government on the matter and was given a satisfactory response. The federal government was at the final stages of approving issuance of secular and implementation of the negotiated adjustments for pensioners. And to literacy, the Global Community marks 2021 World Book Day with emphasis on the need for people to imbibe the culture of reading as a habit in order to explore many benefits derivable from reading. Kelvin Samuel reports. April 23 has been set aside by UNESCO as World Book Day since 1995. This is to celebrate the beautiful works of books and the lives of readers. The opening of the mind as well as many opportunities made possible and accessible only through the help of books. The day also encourages children and the youth on the need to read regularly. Uh, one's level of enlightenment, one's level of awareness about what's going on in the world changes. Reading will give people a background information. Dr. Udeminana is an author and a teacher, a man who has devoted most part of his life reading books for over 45 years. As part of this year's celebration, Udeme gives insight to the importance of reading. It's also the easiest means of traveling to any part of the world. You can sit here in Uyo and you read books about the United States of America and it feels as if you are there. There is an adage that says there is no difference between a man who cannot read and the one who does not read. The difference is therefore in reading regularly. The theme of the 2021 World Book Day is share a story. Explore the world through the pages of books. In Uyo, Kevin Summer, NTA News. And for more on the World Book Day, let's join Adiola in Lagos for more reports. Hello, Adiola. Lise, today is World Book and Copyright Day. The moment is set aside to promote reading culture and advocates the protection of publishers' literary efforts. Hengino John Adams reports on the relevance of this date. Last year was a challenging period for the world. The coronavirus pandemic prompted mandatory confinement for individuals and institutions. Millions were therefore forced to stay indoors with little to do. Books, both hard and soft copies, became popular as people sought escapism in diverse forms. To motivate this group, Bemi Shashore, a publisher, has stayed committed to inspiring Nigerians on ways to adopt reading as a habit. We should talk about the importance of reading and the importance of writing. People, for you to read a book, it means somebody wrote the book. So we should encourage reading and writing in our culture. That's what we try to do in my space. I feel that a, a child's attention should be held and grabbed in a literary work. This year, UNESCO is urging citizens of all nations to challenge themselves by exploring extraordinary topics formats or genres in order to learn new things and enhance their well-being. A whole lot of things could be done in uh, encouraging the reading and writing in the, in the area of uh, younger ones, from book clubs to libraries to book events where you have guest authors to read to the children or the younger ones. The law is not silent on protecting the rights of publishers. It is regulated under the Copyright Act, Cap C to 8 Laws of the Federation 2004, which entitle every inventor and originator of an idea, a design, an invention, to his proprietary interest and rights to the exclusion of all others. Facilitators recommend that Nigerians expand their scope of knowledge by appreciating literature presented by BEMI and other publishers who are relentlessly striving to preserve the place of books in a fast-paced world. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. Now, as the strike to secure financial independence for the judiciary continues in courts across the country, the clampdown on proceedings has persisted. As the dispute enters its third week, Adeniyi Taiwo examines the impact of the strike.
the gates remain shut against visitors other than members of the Judicial Staff Union of Nigeria, Jason, demonstrating their resolve not to yield until their demands are met. Document processors and facilitators like Austin Ali and his colleagues, who are equally determined to make ends meet, even in the face of the lingering strike, were seen loitering around court premises, hoping to still do business. We do have that we need a court, but now they're on strike, we cannot do anything. Since the court is not there's a notary public we use here. Okay. There's a type piece here, we'll go and type it. Although we met him working, typing away on his old typewriter, is in Bami Josiah is not really happy. He said the strike affected his business and that of his colleagues. This one I'm typing is 200 naira, and my transport to Afro is almost 1,000 naira. So I, if I type this today, maybe throughout before the end of the day, I may not type something else. All these lawyers, they usually do the notary work. Uh -huh. If we get some work, we give it to a lawyer. They will help us to notarize it. Apart from the adverse effects on allied businesses, hearing of ongoing and new cases have also been halted, forcing Ruben Bartholomew, a litigant, to wait in vain around the court. Yes, we have a matter here. It's unfortunate because of the situation on ground. The matter could not uh, hold. People that have been granted bail and languishing in jail now for almost two, three weeks because they could not be perfected. Some of them certainly will be innocent of the crime. Even if they are not, our constitution presumes that they are innocent. Go to other commercial disputes and other disputes. All of them now, they are in limbo. While calling for a quick resolution of the standoff, respondents expressed hope that the court, when finally opened, will be better positioned to dispense quick and fair justice. In Lagos, Adini Yitaiwo, NTE News. And we're done from Lagos. We'll take our first break. But when we return, Kemi, who is standing by in Ibadan, will give us stories making the round in that zone. Cordially invited to the 15th NTA, FRCN and Voice of Nigeria Ramadan Lecture. Scheduled for date 24th April 2021. Time 9 a.m. Inshallah. Topic, causes and solutions to Nigerian security challenges, the Islamic perspective. Guest lecturer, Sheikh Dr. Jabir Sainam Mehula, Head of Department, Arabic and Islamic Studies, Sakwata State University, the venue for the event is Lumana Multipurpose Center, River Close of Jabi Road East of Sultan Road, Kaduna. Chairman of the occasion, His Royal Highness Ambassador Ahmed Nuhubamali, Emir of Zesso. Special guest of honor, His Excellency Malin Nasser Ahmed Arufai, the Executive Governor, Kaduna State. Hosts, Yaqub Ibn Muhammad, Director General NTA. Dr. Mansur Liman, Director General FRCN. Dr. Sita Okechuku, Director General Voice of Nigeria. Announcer, Organizing Committee. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you. In your living room, office, and everywhere, anywhere. We provide a company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs, and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview Channel 264, or live streaming via www.visiontv.co.uk. Application for iOS or Android. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Muhammad Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youth and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria. Pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. 
The Senate Committee on Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, wishes to invite stakeholders and the general public to a public hearing on the National Electoral Offenses Commission Establishment Bill 2021, SB 220, date Wednesday 28 April 2021, venue Conference Room 022, New Senate Building, National Assembly Complex, Abuja, time 10 a.m. Individuals and organizations wishing to submit memoranda should submit 35 hard copies and soft copy to the clerk of the committee on or before Monday 26 April. April 2021 at SB 15, Red Carpet, Basement, Senate Wing, White House National Assembly Complex, Abuja. Soft copies of the bill are available at the committee secretariat. The bill can also be downloaded from www.yaga.org, Bill for an Act to Establish the National Electoral Offenses Commission and for Related Matters 2021. For inquiries, please call Dr. Belu Olatunji Babatunde, Clerk, Senate Committee on INEC, 0803-309-4634. Senator Dr. Architect Kabiru Aigaya, Chairman. Senate Committee on INEC announcer. Liverpool are still in the hunt for a top four finish as they welcome Newcastle United to Anfield. Will their ambitions be filed by the visitors this Saturday? It's Liverpool versus Newcastle United on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 12 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Baba Ijabu in association with Gold.com. <laughs> Join us in Ibadan. The National Emergency Management Agency has distributed relief materials to the victims of the fire outbreak at a major market in Ilefe to cushion the effect of the devastation. Correspondent Adi Joke Luyemi's report is here presented. Sequel to the fire outbreak, which destroyed over 400 shops at Odogwe Market in Ilefe. Victims have heaved a sigh of relief as they received relief materials worth millions of naira from the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. We thank the federal government, we thank the state government. We assure them that they will be used effectively and then uh, for the purpose for which they have given to us. Now, we know that they want to help us to rebuild our shop so we need to come fully into our business. NEMA team leader covering Oshun Ikiti and Undo State, Simisaye Aziz, reiterated the commitment of the agency to bring in succor to victims of national disasters in the southwest. I charge the state and local government to be more proactive through early warning system mechanisms, public enlightenment and advocacy on disaster risk reduction and insurance policy throughout the market across the state in order to forestall future occurrence. Items distributed include nails, plants, roofing sheets, among others. More than 250,000 residents in Oyo State have benefited from Omitunsun Free Medical Mission organized by the Oyo State Government in collaboration with the State Ministry of Health. Omokende Igbari has the details. Health, they say, is wealth. Hence, the decision of Oyo State Government under the leadership of Oyo State Governor Shehi Makinde to provide free health outreach for all the residents across the state. The 23 days program was rounded off at Adio Oyo State Hospital, Ringro, Ibado, with various medical checkups for the people. There are also people who their children have benefited from, which is also not part of the package but it was emergency and the doctor has to do the operation, such as anemia and appendicitis. And I want to say, doctors, thank you for that effort. You know, and this is the very first time that uh, we are going to have this kind of uh, massive uh, free medical, uh, because it's all uh, uh, encompassing. Some of the beneficiaries were full of appreciation for the kind gesture from the government. I thank the governor of your state for bringing this free health mission to the state. Some of the ailments treated include high blood pressure, appendicitis, anemia, glaucoma, cataract, as well as other general health checks where surgeries were needed. In Ibadan, Omokende, Igbari, NTA News. And that's it from Ibadan. Elizabeth, it's back to you. Thank you so much, Kemi. 
Now to security. The committee constituted by an state governor, Wadi Obaino, on how best to end the incessant clashes between farmers and herders in the state is working to produce the data of headsmen operating in the state. Undem Kalo reports. The meeting is aimed at strengthening the security architecture in the state as the law banning open grazing is still in force. Governor Ubiano, who commended the ban on night grazing by the Mieti Allah, charged local herdsmen who are known in the state to help in identifying those perpetrating crime among them and also for the committee members to pay compensation for items damaged during past crises in various communities in the state. We want to see a comprehensive list of all the herdsmen that are living in Manama, where they are living, and uh, you need to, to get a comprehensive list, the ways, the pages, the youth leaders will support you to be able to get that. I want to tell us at least uh, here in Manama, we are trying our best to make sure that the uh, house does not destroy the house. Most of these places that uh, there's uh, violence, you cannot see the destruction of our family. Other speakers provide solutions on the way forward in tackling security challenges in the state. The meeting was attended by heads of security agencies in the state, leaders of Mieti Allah, among others, from Aguleri, Ndemkalo, NTA News. The presidency has described as unfortunate recent statement from certain quarters linking the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Issa Ali Pantame, with terrorism. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media and Publicity, Garba Sheo, says the minister is currently subject to a cancel campaign instigated by those who seek his removal. The statement adds that these distractors do not really care about what the minister may or may not have said some 20 years ago. This is merely the instrument that they are using to attempt to cancel him, but they will profit should he be stopped from making decisions that improve the lives of everyday Nigerians. The statement further says this administration stands behind the minister and all Nigerian citizens to ensure they receive fair treatment, fair prizes and fair protection in ICT services. The federal government said should the United Kingdom go ahead with its plans to grant subscribed iPod and MASOP members asylum, it will be undermining the Nigerian government's fight against terrorism. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed took at this during an outing on the news agency of Niger's flagship program, Man Platform. Anthony Forsen reports. News agency of Nigeria's editorial team, led by its managing director, Buki Ponle, engaged the information and culture minister in an interview that lasted over one hour. Taking him one after the other on the state of the nation, Lai Mohammed responded aptly. But when the issue of the United Kingdom planning to offer asylum to the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Ipo, came up, the minister went hand on. As a spokesperson for the federal government of Nigeria, I will say that if indeed the report that the UK uh, will grant asylum to supposedly persecuted IPOB and uh, mass of uh, members is true, then something is wrong somewhere. But I guess the background of uh, the fact that IPOB is not only prescribed in Nigeria, but has also been designated a terrorist organization here in Nigeria. The UK decision is, dis is very dis disrespectful of Nigeria as a sovereign nation. And it, I understand it amounts to sabotaging our fight against terrorism. And generally, it undermines Nigeria's security and even our national unity. And it's unconscionable. And at the same time, it's inexplicable. He said the decision by the UK government, if it is true, calls for question the UK government's real intention. On security threats to the nation, the minister fingered elites, whom he said are fanning the embers of disintegration in the country, but warned that they will bear the greater consequences if the country breaks up. If Nigeria should disintegrate today, we are going to overrun the Republic, overrun Togo, and they will send us back, of course. And they should, I know why the elites are going to suffer. Hmm. Some professors will be working in bakery 
in Togo. Just to survive. Because we saw it happen when the Liberians came here. So they should, it's in their own enlightened self that they should work to fix Nigeria. The minister maintained that the elites expected to be a rallying point and assets of the nation. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Omar Farouk, has expressed dismay over the recent killing of a staff and abduction of some students of Greenfield University, a private institution located along Kaduna Abuja Highway, suspected by suspected gunmen. A statement issued by the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, the Minister sympathized with the Kaduna State Government, the institution and parents of the abducted students. Haja Farouk equally commiserates with the family of the staff who was killed during the attack, praying to God to console the families and security agencies to ensure the safe return of the students, while urging state governments and school authorities to provide adequate security in schools across the country. All international airports across the country will soon have front desks to ensure that due process is adhered to while taking mineral resources out of the country. This was one of the outcomes of a meeting with between the chief executives of Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and the Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparent Initiative. This is a meeting of two agencies saddled with the responsibility to ensure due process, one in the finance and economy while the other in the extractive sector. Being Africa's largest exporter of oil, the country's economy revolves around oil and extractive commodity. With irregularities in both sectors, it is not surprising that NATI and EFCC are partnering, especially when about $20 billion in recoverable revenues in the oil and gas, as well as the mining sector, were identified. We are going to collaborate with NETI to ensure that uh, what has been happening in the oil sector, as well as uh, in the solid mineral sector, is no more happening. We have um, identified the gaps. We know what the problems are. But of course, we will jointly, of course, work with the uh, Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel Development to uh, do some of uh, administrative uh, gaps that we have identified. We are here to seek collaboration because we need our reports to be implemented in such a way that there should be consequences for bad behavior. And then you know, encouragement for good conduct. Their collaboration is expected to promote more transparency and accountability in the extractive industries. And now to the oil and gas, President Mohamed Buhari has approved the restoration of the leases on OMLS 123, 124, 126 and 137 to the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, which is in production sharing contract with Ardax Petroleum, a company wholly owned by the government of the People's Republic of China on the blocks. The leases belonging to the Federation were revoked on March 30, 2021. In a statement signed by the Senior Special Assistant, the President on Media and Publicity, this development reaffirms the commitment of President Buhari to the rule of law and sanctity of contracts. The restoration of the blocks to NNPC will boost the organization's portfolio, thereby making the corporation to eventually boost its crude oil production and in turn increase the revenue it generates to the Federation account. Time now to pause here. Let's now join Sadia in Sokoto for more reports. Hello, Sadia. Hello, Elizabeth. Zamfara state government has warned officials entrusted with the distribution of Ramadan welfare packages against diverting them. Speaker Zamfara State House of Assembly Nasir Maazu Magaria gave the warning while flagging off the, dis the distribution of the food items in Kusau. Haru Muhammad Umar has more. Zamfara state government recently procured more than 180,000 bags of assorted food items for distribution to people in the state, especially the needy, to enable them to observe the ongoing Ramadan fast with ease. The items include 60,000 bags of rice, 30,000 bags each of maize and sugar, 50,000 bags of millet, and 10,000 bags of beans. The state governor, Bella Muhammad, who flagged up distribution of the items, immediately constituted a committee under the leadership of the speakers 
Kaisan for a State House of Assembly, Nasir Mu'azu Magaria, to ensure the commodities reach the target beneficiaries in all the 2,516 polling units across the state. The committee which commenced distribution of the items to Gusau, Kauran Namuda and Telata Mafara local government areas representing central, north and west senatorial districts of the state. We are going to uh, ensure that each of able polling units, 2,516 of brothers of forest to see their own. The items are built to be extended to the remaining local government areas for onward distribution to all the polling units in the state for the benefit of the masses. In Gusau, Haliru Muhammad Umar, NTA News. Now, with the weather condition in Sokoto reaching up to 20, 39 to 40 degrees Celsius and the Ramadan fast, the heat gets unbearable during the day. Residents seek different ways of getting relief from the sun. Sheikh Muhammad Dati has the report. With the current high temperature given up to 34 degrees and above and the Ramadan fast, residents of Sokoto have been battling with the heat. The streets that used to be congested with vehicular movement gets deserted in the afternoon as residents seek relief from the scorching sun at different places. Some seek the relief under the tree sheds while others choose to go to the river. Some of the respondents identified epileptic power supply as a reason for their decision to go to the river as the heat gets unbearable during the day. And experts say this has a medical implication. That is what you call water impounding diseases. These water impounding diseases include things like cystosomiasis, what people usually know known to be bilharziasis. The water is not moving. There are some snails. Mm -hmm. These snails, if they, uh, if they infest the water, pour on your own body can lead to you getting this condition. Dr. Kudogar Bailo said it is better to be under the tree shed than in the water. In Sokoto, Show Muhammad Dati, NTA News. And that's it from here. It's back to Elizabeth in Abuja. <laughs> Thanks for staying. The Nigeria Centre for Disease Control has confirmed 100 new cases of COVID-19 in the country. In the latest figures released, Taraba has 64 new infections, Lagos 21, the FCT4 and Rivers 3 cases. Others are Aquaibom, Kaduna and Oyo states with two new infections each, while Nasara and Bauchi have one new infection each. Nigeria now has 164,588 confirmed cases of COVID-19, out of which 154,578 have been treated and discharged in 2,061 persons died of the virus. Still on COVID-19 containment, federal government says a comprehensive audit of COVID-19 funds will be carried out to ensure accountability and transparency in the management of the funds. Minister of State, Budget and National Planning, Clement Agba, at an engagement with civil societies in Abuja, says Office of the Auditor General of the Federation will soon commence the exercise. Joshua Ojito reports. In the wake of COVID-19 pandemic last year, it is estimated that Nigeria is said to have received billions of naira as grants and supports for COVID-19 response, with federal government also committing 500 billion naira under its economic sustainability program to mitigate impact of the pandemic. How were these funds expended in the fight against COVID-19 is the basis for this conversation by civil societies to keep track of the funds to ensure they were judiciously used. The federal government has tried its part, but I think the problem on the palliative distribution is directly from the state level down to the local government level. So what I think government should do is that there should be more of citizen inclusion, where uh, community leaders, religious leaders in local communities should also be part of this process. We need to look at the planning, both at the national national level, at the state level, at the local government level, because if you don't track how the processes are carried out, 
then it will not reach the, the, the targeted group. A emergency um, delivery of items um, to, to people needs much more holistic appraisal. The advent of fake news and misinformation, it is pertinent that government is able to respond proactively to provide timely information for citizens so that we can remain united as we fight the pandemic. Minister of State, Budget and National Planning, Clement Agba, who joins the conversation virtually, says, in line with the anti-corruption posture of the president administration, all COVID-19 funds expended will be accounted. In Abuja, Joshua Ojito, NTA News. And to religious martyrs, the message of peaceful coexistence in Nigeria has been re-echoed by the chairman Northern Governors Forum in Plata State Governor Simon Lalong, among other Christians and Muslim leaders at a symbolic Ramadan Iftar at Al-Halbibiya Islamic Society in Abuja, where he joined thousands of Muslims to break their fast. Abdullah Ajiya reports. In the month of Ramadan comes Allah's mercy with moral, spiritual and social benefits and blessings. The presence of the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum and Governor of Plato State, Simon Lalong, and John Cardinal Onaikon, among other interfaith leaders at the Al Habibiya Break of Fast, further demonstrates the desire to always use interfaith dialogue to unite the country for peace and unity. I do this and I express this and I send it outside to my brothers, especially who are in leadership, governors everywhere, that we must encourage this religious harmony. No religion promotes wickedness. So once you, we see that something is happening that is actually going the way of wickedness, of not being kind to one another, the first thing that a religious leader should do is to say, stop it. We are all created by God. And where if you're actually serving God, well, whomever you see, you see God in them. And when you see God in them, everything is equal. We are so pleased that these two different faiths are together. We have participated in the iftar today, the tenth day of Ramadan. We are so pleased. And this is how it's supposed to be, wherever. You do not have distinguished before between any persons. By the record presented, over 2,000 people get their iftar meals daily from the Al Habibiya Ramadan Food Bank program. This gesture, the visitors said, should be emulated and sustained for the overall good of the country. Abdullah Hajia, NCNU. In our last stop on Nationwide today is Kaduna, where Salamatu will be our guide. Hello. Hello, Elizabeth, and welcome to Kaduna. Abductors of Greenfield University students Kaduna have shot dead three of the students in an act of mindless evil and sheer wickedness. The armed bandits who kidnapped students of Greenfield University have shot dead three of the abducted students. A statement by the Kaduna State Commissioner of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruan, says the remains of the three students were found this Friday in Kwanam Baturi village, a location close to the university. Governor Nasser Erufai has condemned the killing of three students, describing it as sheer wickedness, inhumanity, and an outright discretion of human lives by vile entities. He said the bandits represent the worst of humankind and must be fought at all costs for the violent wickedness they represent. The governor, on behalf of the government and people of Kaduna State, sent deep condolences and empathy to the students, families, and university community as he prayed for the repose of their souls. Emir of Zazo, Ambassador Ahmed Nuhu Bamali has enjoined people of the Emirates to continue to embrace peace and show love by helping the less privileged among them. The Emir was speaking at the 10th day Ramadan breaking of fast held at his palace in Zaria. Sagir Mohammed Awal reports. The annual breaking of fast on the 10th day of Ramadan has been a long-standing tradition in Zaria. Spanning more than five decades, it brings together illustrious sons of Zazal Emirates at the instance of the Emir. Besides its spiritual significance, the forum provides a platform for cross-fertilization of ideas on how to move the Emirate forward with guests treated to sumptuous meals. Emir of Zazal 
Ambassador Ahmed Luba Mali says there is urgent need for sons and daughters of the Emirates to close ranks in advancing and consolidating successes recorded over time. While describing the month of Ramadan as a month of abundant blessings of Allah, the Emir calls on his people to forgive one another and forge a common front. I would like to call on people to learn from the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to be tolerant of one another, to forgive and love one another. I hope people will use this opportunity to do good to their brothers and sisters, to build friendship and to help the needy. This is the first time Ambassador Ahmed Nuba Mali is presiding over a tent of Ramadan breaking of fast as Emir. In Zaria, I'm Sagir Muhammad Awal, NTA News. And that concludes our package from here. It's back to Elizabeth in Abuja for more stories on Nationwide. My name is uh, Chikwe Iyakwazo. I lead the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. I'm extremely privileged to have gotten this vaccine today. And uh, really, I accept it really on behalf of all the healthcare workers, public health workers that have really spent the last 12 months working so incredibly hard on, on this response. And I, I think it um, provides hope you know, this vaccine really provides us an opportunity uh, to reinvigorate ourselves as we sustain the response in Nigeria. So this vaccine provides us a real shot at life. But, you know, that shot will come into effect when we have most of the population uh, vaccinated. Uh, we have to keep washing our hands, wearing our masks, keeping apart from each other until we have enough people vaccinated in the country. And I'm sure we'll get there. Contemporary times require practical skills to remain competitive and relevant in your organization. Therefore, take advantage of NTA TV College short proficiency courses to sharpen your professional skills. Protocol, Event Management and Public Relations. Date 3rd May to 14th May 2021. Two weeks. Intermediate Camera Operation Techniques. Date 17th May to 11th June 2021. Four weeks. The course fee for the four-week course is 100,000 Naira per participant. The fee for the two-week course is 80,000 Naira, while the course fee for the one-week course is 40,000 Naira only. Accommodation inclusive. Venue for all the courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA TV College near Old Government House, Rayfield, Jaws. For more inquiries, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, Jaws. Training you to be the best you want to be. On behalf of our family, I have the honor to announce the final funeral rites of our beloved father and family patriarch, Omekuru Eyangweze, who recently joined his ancestors at the stagely age of 92 years. The event details are as follows. Date, April 24, 2021. Time, 12 noon. Venue, Eyangweze's family compound. Ejainere Umeda, Enugwezike, Igweze North, local government area of Enugu State. Our family will be pleased to have our friends and well wishers join us as we bid our father farewell in a carnival blaze featuring dances, social and cultural displays, as well as merry making to mark his eventful and epical life here on earth. Senator Ayogweze. Liverpool are still in the hunt for a top four finish as they welcome Newcastle United to Anfield. Will their ambitions be filed by the visitors this Saturday? It's Liverpool versus Newcastle United on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 12 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Baba Ijabu in association with Gold.com. <laughs> Thank you.
used to watch nationwide. Now to climate talks, President Mohammed Buhari has made a strong representation to member nations of the global community to not only embrace what he calls secular economy, but also ensure sustainable production and consumption models that will expedite the attainment of the long-term goals of the Paris Agreement. Nigeria is said is committed to galvanizing relevant stakeholders for climate action towards achieving the objectives. This was in his statement to the Virtual Leaders Summit on Climate. State House correspondent Adam Osama will bring us details of his report in our subsequent bulletin. Next is Sports Update. Welcome to Sports Update. I am Badi Adileye. Nigeria Customs Women recorded their second win at the 2021 Africa Club Volleyball Championship on Friday, beating Nasek of Côte d'Ivoire in straight sets. The Nigerian representatives won the first set 26 to 24, the second 25 to 13, and the third 25 to 11. Their male counterparts will be in action on Saturday when they take on Rwanda Energy in a playoff 9 to 12 counter. To football now, as the backlash of the failed European Super League project continues to ravage top club sites in Europe, General Secretary of the Nigeria Football Federation, Mohamed Sanusi, says FIFA and UEFA prioritize players and clubs' welfare over lucrative sponsorship deals. If FIFA cares about business, yes, you can take that away because you cannot do anything without money. But more importantly, FIFA cares about the health and well-being of players. Meanwhile, one of the clubs involved in the third breakaway, Liverpool, will be hoping to get their top four charge in the Premier League back on track when they host Newcastle United at Anfield on Saturday with a match live on NT Network from 12 noon. West Ham United and Chelsea will clash later on Saturday with Leeds United and Manchester United facing off at Elland Road on Sunday. And finally, sports administrators in the country have been admonished to intensify grassroots sports talent hunt to solidify the foundation of Nigeria's future in international competitions. Seriki of Karushi, Ismaila Mohamed, led the charge when he received 2021 National Principals Cup Football Champions for Sla Academy in Abuja. We, the people of Karushi, are very, very, very proud of this school for placing our name on this map. The National Principals Cup was recently revived by the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development. And that does it on Sports Update. I am Badi Adeleye. Thank you so much, Badi. A funeral ceremony for late President Idris Derby has been held in Chart's capital with thousands of people paying respect to the leader who died of wounds sustained while leading his troops against a rebel offensive. French President Emmanuel Macron and several African leaders were present at the ceremony, despite rebel warnings that they should not attend for security reasons. Chart held late President Idris Deby's funeral Friday amid mounting tensions as the rebels say they do not recognize the slain president's son as a new leader and threaten to depose him. Reports have it that there was heavy deployment of troops in the face of security concerns. French President Emmanuel Macron and Congo's President Felix Tshisekedi were among the heads of state at the ceremony for the late president who ruled the Central African nation for 30 years and died at the age of 68. Macron pledged support for the country's stability and integrity, but also urged his military successors to steer a smooth return to civilian rule. He addressed his words to the casket saying, you lived as a soldier. You died as a soldier with weapons in hand. You gave your life for Chad in defense of its citizens. France will be there to support Chad without any hesitation, helping a peaceful Chad to keep its promise to its children and to all of its components. The transition will also have a role to play. And we will be there at its side. Friday's ceremony also saw a military match passed and a speech by Debbie's son, General Mohammed Kaka Debbie Idno, who the army named as the country's new leader. He vowed to stay loyal to the memory of his father and pledged to continue the legacy of dialogue, forgiveness, peace and unity that the late president was admired for. Justin Bemunyi, NTA News. 
And that ends nationwide today. Thank you so much for your time. Do remember to connect with us at the NCA, Stand Against Rape and Rapist. Good evening.